Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY, that's 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in New Hampshire, Oregon, and Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash football. Welcome back again, everybody, to Bear Bets, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. DraftKings Sportsbook is the number one place to bet touchdowns this season. And this week, new customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bet if your first, if your first bet wins. Not a bad deal. Download the DK Sportsbook app. Use the code BEARBETS. That's BEARBETS when you sign up. DraftKings Sportsbook. The crown is yours. See, they mixed the read up on us. This I week. know, but you, you, you nailed it again. Two days in a row. So, I know, because I, I like, like I said, I had been kind of memorized the other one, yeah. and so it's like me- muscle memory, and actually had to like look and. Make What's sure. your fi- what your five dollar wager this week on a money line favor of the NFL to get your bonus bet? What are you taking? <laughs> it's a rough week in the to NFL get, to, get, to get your seventeen cents or whatever. Whatever, yeah. whatever the hell it is. Nah. Um, the Chiefs, obviously. The Chiefs? the Chiefs aren't gonna lose. No, you don't think so. Not with Jeff Schwartz in attendance. No, not with me in attendance. No, Def- definitely not. I'm looking forward to it. I, I don't go to many games. It's my son's first chief game. We'll talk a little bit more of this yeah. in, in, in the game. I got a funny story that makes me a very cool dad. So I'm looking forward to uh, taking him to a, a football game. And you know what? I always worry that I watch all the games, right? I typically work on Sundays. I have radio for, for VSIN. I got some stuff for Fox Sports Radio. I'm, I'm in front of like the TV all day. So I watch all the action on Sunday. I always get a little anxious that I'm going to miss the games. Mm-hmm. because I'll be at a right. game. But then I saw the schedule this week, and I thought <laughs> that the man did me a favor. I won't miss anything being at the at the Chiefs game this weekend. Yeah, as I, as I joke with John, we recorded the gambling group chat already. It's a joke with John. A good week to have a nice Liverpool match on uh, on, on Sunday yeah. to, to avoid watching the... Uh, the it's going to be a bad week. The grossest, shortest. Oh. Like, so many teams are, 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 are on by. Six, I think, right? And you got just gross teams at home that are big underdogs. But you know what? Something freaking ridiculous will happen. A couple of these ugly teams will win outright. And and the, we need a weekend where these home dogs cover like they used to. It would be yes. nice for them to cover so the bartender doesn't have a 64% win percentage this weekend. I, I know a home underdog that covered one outright last week. This is a... This is the present for you. I was. Told, I was on. I was told to. to I was on from, from my wife. Who, it's, a, it's a terrible towel for those who are unaware. Mm-hmm. Bear's wife is a Steelers fan. She trolls me every week on Instagram after the Steelers win. Sends me a message saying like, "You stink. You don't pick the Steelers <laughs> a week." I picked them last. I picked them to cover last. I week. Told her. I told her that as one of my covered. I. I look. I thought they would have a season this year, Bear, that would be under five hundred. So I did just, I. I just did not see it, and. Um, I, I, I don't know how they do it. I mean, I know how they do it. They do it because they have a culture and they breed winning by physicality and by smart football and by just pounding your opponent into submission. It's an organization that yes. starts at the top. Correct. And it's all the culture but, that comes down through it. Unlike the former Washington commanders under Daniel Snyder, unlike the New York football jets. Like you're not getting an, 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 an article that, that details that, that Art Rooney is, is doing personnel decisions. Right, for exactly. The, for exactly. The Art Rooney wants, <laughs> Art Rooney wants to, wants to bench Brent Bar- yes. Roethlisberger. So yeah. you're, you're not getting those. And so, and like the, and I think last weekend, Justin Fields came in for, for a tick, right? And he, he mm-hmm. ran the ball. Oh, he did one of my pet peeves in football. They changed the rule like 10 years ago from quarterback slide mm-hmm. to protect them. Yep. That you're marked where you start, start your, your slide. slide. And yet quarterbacks don't get this still. They still slide short of the first no. down marker. 10 years ago, it was when you were touched. Yep. Like it was you were you got the first down. You should just dive head first all the time. When you dive head first too, A, the ball you, is out. The boys in front of you. B, you avoid those head-to-head contact. 
Like, one thing, if you watch Lamar Jackson play, when he runs, he dives forward. He mm -hmm. rarely slides in a pile. You dive forward, you avoid all that contact. Just dive forward. But the point I was making is that, you know, Justin Fields got benched, right? And he seems just like, obviously, he's a pissed. He got, I imagine inside he doesn't, he feels like he's upset he got benched. But you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you, you, you couldn't tell by his right. attitude. And they asked him to come in a game, he goes and executes. Like, they, the Steelers just have this thing about them where they're just next man up, Highsmith is out now. Doesn't matter. Like they've won two games this year with with six field goals in both of those games. I don't know how they do it, but now so do, do, is this mine to keep or I have to give, I have to give it back? No, you have to give it back. Oh, well, so I actually I actually need it for tonight. You need it for tonight for the game tonight. Are, are you sitting in in I'm your hotel room in Columbus? Exactly. Yeah, and then in, in, wave the towel, wave, wave it around. Yeah, wave the towel around. Um, look, it's Christmas Day, Chiefs Steelers play play. Um, it's it game matters a lot more than it might have might have previously because it might be for home field advantage. Um, I'll uh, I'll be texting you that day. I'm gonna I I'll, I'll find a wager. Or to, to, to I, I, I think Chris Boswell should get some Mark Mosley esque MVP votes for. Oh, uh, jeez. And then tonight I'll miss a couple because of course it's the NFL. How great how great would that be? Like you, you look at the uh, the MVP voting at the end of the year. See, like they, they vote to five now, right? Yeah, they vote one through. Yeah. We, we get we get Chris Boswell with the fifth place. I vote. mean, this, it's only it's AP voters. It's not like college football when like you know people that cover the team basically vote. It's like it's a yeah. group of fifty AP voters. I mean, of course they cover teams, but um, it uh, it would be interesting though if if he got like an MVP vote. Um, okay, Bear. So are are they a legitimate that's Super that's Bowl good. contender? 18 um, to 1. They are the sixth choice to win this. That's a crazy right there. They are the sixth choice. They are they are a shorter price than the 49ers, Packers, Chargers, and Texans. I right? mean, you you can't deny what they're doing. Um, we keep saying, like, wait till they play a better team. Well, they play those better teams. Beat them. Commanders and, and Ravens, they beat them. Um Yes, and they're going to have a home playoff game at least, most likely, if they win the division. Mm -hmm. They're two games up right now, right, in the division, I believe? Yep. And the Browns and Bengals aren't going to win the division. Right. It's up to the Ravens now, who they do play later in the season again. Um, you get a home playoff game, you win that game, now you're two games away. Like, you're you're right there. So, I would I would, look, I would rank it basically, I mean, look, I'm defaulting to the Chiefs at one in the AFC just because I think you have to until proven otherwise. But it's, you know, it's Buffalo and Kansas City, 1A, 1B. And then probably, I mean, Pittsburgh just beat Baltimore. How do you not have them third in the AFC? It's going to be that's going to be an interesting. Uh, I think I would take the Ravens to win if they play in the playoffs. Obviously, we have a couple weeks left to figure that out. Right, but they just beat them though. But you can't win games not scoring off at the touchdown in the postseason. Correct, and I think that's the thing as well. Actually, I actually think they did though. They beat the Chiefs without scoring an off at the touchdown. And that right? Then the Chiefs the. Cower. No, 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 the Alex Smith game where, where uh, the Chiefs lost 16-14, and it was like Alex Smith's last, uh, it was in 2017, I think it was. Is that his last playoff win? Uh, is that is that Tomlin's last playoff win? So, I mean, because that, that's the thing as well. Like, yeah, they have won a playoff game forever, and that's kind of the knock now, too. Oh, sorry, it was it was 20, it was 20, it was the 2016 season. The Steelers won 18-16. Yep. And I don't think they scored off at the touchdown. I think I think it was the same thing again. I think it was just six field goals. That, that, that would be that would certainly be on brand. So I'm looking right now. You're 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 looking right now. Yeah, uh, I, yeah. It was. Uh, I don't see an offensive touchdowns in here. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. Boswell went six for six. <laughs> and when it, so they, so I take it back. They can win a playoff game, but it's going off. Stand touchdown. corrected. Yeah, 2016, 18, 16. That and the Chiefs drafted Mahomes after that. After that game, it's, yeah. The, the, the rest is history. The rest is history. Yeah. Anyway, NFC two teams win the NFC right now. Lions, Lions and Eagles. Eagles, probably. Yeah, it's, it's a, a small Super Bowl bubble. Right? Can the Texans? I, I'm not. I don't think so. Like, like offensive line, I think they still have some problems. Early, early on, I, I was impressed, but the, I don't think the last couple of weeks have been very uh, flattering to the Texans. Losing, but then, then again, you say that they're good enough to get up. What seventeen or whatever the hell it yeah. was against the Lions? Like they they got That's the talent. Point. Yeah. I, I just think their road will probably be too tough in the AFC to I agree to get there. So, speaking of a uh, tough road, a tough group, the four of us in the gambling group chat. You wouldn't want to you want to come up on us on the uh, uh, on the road to the Super Bowl in New Orleans. Myself, Jeff, joined by Will, John Murray, Superbook Sports. Enjoy gambling group chat.
Jeff in the group chat time once again, NFL season rolling on. Myself and Jeff joined by uh, Will Hill and John Murray of the Superbook. John, I know where you're probably distraught to see that the Cleveland Cavaliers are no longer undefeated. That 1,000 to 1 that one of those sports books was offering the, their money safe for another week. That was a tough one for me, guys. I mean, there's no need to rub it in. I I, I got down on that 1,000 to 1. You know, only 67 games away from cashing that ticket. So <laughs> that's a tough one. It's okay. I'm going to dust myself off. I'm going to go back to work today. Go back to work, and you'll go back to work with another team from Cleveland, hopefully for a, a better result Thursday night. Uh, the Browns, a three-and-a-half-point home underdog against the Steelers coming off that big win uh, against the Ravens last week. Uh, bad weather, so I would think a lot of uh, – Player prop unders and unders would be in play here uh, with, with rain and wind and precipitation, all that fun stuff. Uh, Browns seem like the type of team this week, John, that you're going to be rooting for a lot of these ugly, ugly sides, right? Oh, definitely. I mean, we'll definitely – a lot of the money line parlays for this weekend are going to start with Pittsburgh tonight. We're going to root for the Browns. I can tell you guys, though, we have seen some respected money come in on Cleveland. We opened this game four. We got down to three and a half. We took some more money at plus three and a half yesterday, Wednesday. We didn't move it off of three and a half. We just moved the juice around a little bit. But we have definitely seen the sharp accounts on the Browns. I've been doubting the Steelers since week one, Will. I doubt them every week. So you don't want my opinion on this game. I've been wrong about those guys all year long. I am right there with you. I thought under eight and a half. I watched them play in the preseason. And maybe this is a lesson. Just kind of, uh, if you watch the preseason, maybe just ignore it. Because remember last year, it was the, the Steelers were the story too because Pick, uh, Pickett played so well. And wow, the Steelers are going to be great. Pickett looked awesome. And they ended up sneaking into the playoff. But it wasn't because of Pickett who eventually got benched. So yeah, be careful watching the preseason. I'm right there with you. I thought the schedule would get them. And they still do have a tough schedule. That being said, it would be Cleveland or nothing for me. We're talking about, and this is a, a common theme for this week. We're talking about, uh, laying points, laying over a field goal on the road. That's a different neighborhood than Tomlin where he's getting points at home last week, getting points in a lot of these games. It'd be a lean to Cleveland. Uh, I actually like the under. I know it's low and there's not a lot of wiggle room there, but bad weather. Uh, Pittsburgh's just going to run the ball. They're going to be conservative. Try not to turn it over. Uh, of course, Winston can throw you some. Uh, I think Pittsburgh probably just goes to this game and say, hey, we're going to get a turnover at some point. Let's run, punt, kick field goals, be conservative. Uh, I like the under here. I think the under is a good call too, Will, because of the wind, right? I mean, the, the, the Steelers have won two games this year, uh, kicking six field goals in each game, which is kind of remarkable. Um, <laughs> and, you know, last week they made six field goals in Pittsburgh, which is even more remarkable because the wind there. Um, and, you know, look, you know, the wind tonight will be a problem for quarterbacks on the football. The Steelers offense, I say this every week, it's three things, right? It's run the football. It's move Russell Wilson out of the pocket. And then it's those moon balls. Well, the moon ball's a little harder to complete when it's really windy out. So uh, I think I'm with you guys here. And look, Winston threw for like 400 yards last week uh, in a game that, again, they sort of had to throw because the run game wasn't working. I've been very unimpressed with the Browns since Winston came in a starting lineup there. You know, we had that we had that over three and a half win wager that, I, I yeah, mean. you looked good after you got your that first win. I, I don't know now. So I would lean under here, under, under any uh, quarterback props, things like that, uh, but not a strong play in anything. Yeah, I, I think all the, the the biggest thing I think for me, I would love a Cleveland win myself, just because having the uh, a Ravens division bet that, that kind of took a little bit of a hit uh, last week with the Steelers getting that second uh, six field goal win of the uh, of the season. So it is a massively ugly week. It's with a, probably with the shortest week of the year. It's the ickiest week of the year. The, just. Uh, bad home dog side after bad home dog side. And uh, we're going to continue the uh, the parade of uh, gross-looking teams with the Colts. Uh, seven and a half point uh, dog uh, against the Lions. And the, the Colts came back and Anthony Richardson made some plays last week and they beat uh, the Jets, who were certainly one of the worst teams in the league. Lions continue to... Um, just roll on. I mean, Dan Campbell could have let up last week. I didn't left a lot of his players in the game, which maybe could have ultimately backfired, but it didn't. Um, so Lions, uh, seven, seven and a half total of 50 against the, uh, the Colts. Again, you, you would expect everyone here to be coming in on the Lions, right, John? Well, there's no doubt about that. So this will be <laughs> Indianapolis. I should say will be our biggest need of the day. 
uh, Indianapolis or the Rams. It might be the Rams because they're playing on Sunday night football. But I, I know we're going to be huge Colts fans on Sunday morning. Going up against the Lions is not really a good position to be in. It hasn't worked out well for us all season, guys. But mm. it, it's going to be a one-way avalanche of money on Detroit. That does look like a big number to me because I don't think Indianapolis is quite that bad. But we'll see. I, the Lions just continue to roll over people. They look like they're the I think they're the best team in the league. So we'll see, man. We'll be big Colts fans on Sunday. Just what I want to be doing on Sunday. Though. <laughs> I want to watch the Colts. That's that's where I want to be on Sunday morning in my office rooting for the Colts and, and, against the Detroit Lions. And, and then you can you, like then you can slide on later in the afternoon and start rooting for the Raiders. No, well, I, I do that every week, Bear. That's no that's no big deal. I mean. Every week we're praying the Raiders can somehow at least cover the spread. I thought they were going to cover last Sunday, and then they gave up like an 80-yard touchdown yes. pass. <laughs> so all they had to do was, uh, was yeah. tackle Jonu Smith in bounds before <laughs> he touched the end zone, and that game would have yep. ended with the Raiders cover because the bartender has bet against the Raiders every week. So I've unfortunately yeah. been on the Raiders, and they refuse to cover a single game. Uh, I'm on the Colts in this game. I, I'm I'm doing it well. Uh, step in front of the Lions freight train here. Um, look, the Lions have been unstoppable. We get that. They've blown a lot of teams out. Understandable. Uh, but they just went on the road a couple weeks ago and were down at halftime big to the Texans. Had a big comeback, obviously, to win that game. And look, Richardson gives the Colts a juice that Joe Flacco does not give them. Now, with that juice comes comes – Poor plays, right? You're going to get some bad plays. You're going to have some really high plays, though. But seven and a half feels like a bit much. Um, I'm going to fade the hot team. If you remember, the Colts were hosting the Steelers. Was it back in week four? I think it was. Steelers looked really good. Yep. Uh, I took the Colts in that one as well. I'm not sure the Colts win the game, Will, but uh, I'll step in front of the Lions freight train here and take the Colts plus seven and a half. Have fun with it. Yeah, I mean, it's probably the right side. The old school handicapping method of, hey, you're getting more than a touchdown at home. Take the home dog. That's that's probably the right way to play it. I just, man, with all the games and all the props and all the options to bet, betting against the Lions, uh, like John alluded to, it's just uh, there, there's better ways for me to bet my money. I think I've teased the Lions. I expect the Lions to win the game. And we just keep thinking like, oh, against the Jags, they'll be flat. Against the Titans a month or so, they'll be flat. They're just, they, they never seem to be flat. Granted, against Houston, if you got the, the worst of the number, uh, you lost that one. But that took just an average avalanche of turnovers and they still won the game against a uh, you know decent Texan team so I don't know uh I mean you figure they're not going to go 16 and 1 and just win and cover every week and, and just keep steamrolling teams but again I, I just think there's better ways to bet than fading this Lions team and I know it sounds square to come on here and say hey the shortest shot on the board to win the Super Bowl there's value on that and you're not going to get any you know attention on social media or get any clicks or you know any, any style points but I don't know, Detroit, four to one plus four twenty to win the Super Bowl. That might be a bet you just make and you kind of forget about it and you look up in a couple months, you're happy you have it. They look like the real deal. No, they 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 certainly do. Um I'm gonna get back to something later in the uh in the show about another team that I think might be a bit overlooked. And I think that team is the Philadelphia. The Jets? Oh, yes, with the Jets. I, I you know, if they win out, they probably might be able to get into the playoff of that wild card at nine and eight in the AFC, just because uh maybe eight and nine might get might get you a wild card in the AFC as well. But yeah, now they, if Rodgers comes back this year. Um that that would probably be a bonus if Rodgers comes back this year. He could have come back last year too. So yes. but anyway, uh, they're so bad. It's comical. Did you read the article about Woody Johnson basically being in charge of everything. It's good. It's he, uh, he'll be he'll be over in London soon as the UK ambassador for uh, the Trump administration for this his second term, like he was the first term. And uh, maybe we'll get some adults in the room and some real football uh, people involved. But I mentioned a team that might be overlooked a little bit, and it's the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, I don't know, John. You mentioned that you might think that the uh, the, the Lions are clearly the best team in football. I, I kind of think we might be overlooking the Eagles just a little bit because Dick Sirianni makes some mind-numbing decisions. And at times, Jalen Hurts doesn't look like a great passer. But you got Barkley and you got Gainwell and you got the offensive line getting healthy now. You got a defense that looks like it's really warming up to Vic Fangio's scheme. The, the young corners are playing well. Uh, the front is getting getting pressure on quarterbacks now. I mean, there, there are worse bets, I think, to be made than the Philadelphia Eagles to win the NFC, the Philadelphia Eagles to have the number one overall record uh, in the league. That's around 9-1. to one. Like, 
if something happens with the Eagles schedule is very easy. If the Lions happen to drop a game here against Buffalo or someone else, we could be looking at the, the Eagles with the number one seed in the NFC. And then all of this uh, golf outdoors in the playoff. You saw what happened a couple of years ago when, when, when the Niners had to go to, to Philadelphia and Purdy got hurt and they, they couldn't move the ball after that. But golf, bad weather at the link. Uh, it's a possibility. So while I agree with you, John, I do think that the uh, the Lions are the best team. I'm not sure I'm willing to to take that short price. Well, I think there's still some value uh, potentially on the Eagles here uh, to, to be the number one seed in the NFC, number one uh, overall seed with the best record and uh, uh, win the NFC. I actually have a, my best bet actually involves this game uh, later in the show. But I know, I know John, you kind of hinted that you, you guys are going to need the Rams. Yeah, we will. But I have to say the Eagles are a team that uh, four or five, six weeks ago, I kind of wrote them off. So did I, I thought Sirianni was kind of a joke and I didn't really think much of their offense. And I guess somebody finally got to Nick Sirianni and was like, hey, coach, all you have to do is just run the football <laughs> with Barkley and you're going to win. And we saw that on Thursday night. They did everything they could to keep Washington in that game. And then at some point in the second half, it was like, hey, by the way, coach, just run the ball up the middle on every play and we'll blow these guys out. If if they can just stick to what works for them, their defense is playing really well. If they can just stick to what, what works for, with them on offense, they are going to be right there at the end in the NFC. They're going to be right there with Detroit. San Francisco's got too many guys hurt, and I don't really trust the other teams in the conference. So it could come down to Detroit and Philadelphia in the NFC the Rams are going to be a big need for us on Sunday night. Look at the time slot. We talk about this every week. All the parlays always roll to these night games, these primetime games. There's not a game in the afternoon other than, I guess, maybe Denver that the public is going to be all over. They're going to be all over Philadelphia. So I know the sports books are going to need the Rams big. Well, if you want to bet the Rams, you might want to wait and see how Sunday goes. The books might need to raise this line a little bit depending on their liabilities going into Sunday night football. Yeah. I don't think I want any part of the Rams. I like the Eagles. I agree with everything you guys said. And I think we talked about it last week going into the Washington game. And you just, you know, the simple exercise of naming the players on the team. I mean, it's two top 15 or 20 receivers in Smith and Brown. It's a really good offensive line. Goddard's a solid tight end. Barkley's not a good back. He's a great back. Hertz is a little up and down, but he's still a top 10 ish quarterback and the defense, you know, the Georgia guys starting to play a little better. These rookie corners are becoming lockdown guys. The Fangio scheme that everyone talks about that, you know, it takes time to gel, but once you get it, it's really effective. Uh, I don't know. I remember before the season I saw they, they have like, what will the NFC title game be? The exact is if you have to name both teams, I, I'm curious what a Lions Eagles one would be now. Maybe it's too late and you missed the boat, but that certainly seems like it's the title game. I don't think anybody in the South is going to the title game. You know, the Falcons look like frauds. Uh, anybody in the West, I, I'm high on Arizona, but NFC title game, probably not. Minnesota right. has cooled off. So uh, I think that we're probably looking at a Detroit Philly NFC title game and that. I would probably pick whoever at home field as good as the Lions are. You mentioned if, if golf is outdoors in Philly, I don't know how that goes, but that would be a hell of a title game. And I, I think that's what we're looking at. So haven't bet the Eagles yet, but I, I probably will bet the Eagles here, Bear. I mean, the things that you have to do well to win the conferences, you have to be good in the trenches. Philly's good in the trenches, right? They have good offensive line, good defensive line. We mentioned this last week about how long it takes a defense and an offense, by the way, to get up to speed with new coordinators. It feels like Vic Fangio's defense, and it's not a complicated defense, but they just play it really well, and, and they're figuring out what to do defensively, and they have playmakers and linebackers, which I haven't had for, for so many years. And look, if, if a game, um, if it evolves at a certain point to Jalen Hurts having to win the game for the Eagles in a playoff game. Do I feel great about that? I, I don't know. Maybe. Um, but they haven't had to do that in the last month because they're running the ball well. As John mentioned, they decided to run the football, which has been hugely important to their success. So, yes, it feels like it's them and the Lions right now in a crash course to meet. And it feels like that game will be in Detroit, which um, would be good for Jared Goff. But I'll tell you what, guys. We, the, the Lions went outside to Green Bay a couple weeks ago. Played in the bad weather, played outside for the first time this year, and Goff looked fine. He looked fine in San Francisco in, in the postseason last year. Yeah, I wonder if that sort of is over now, sort of Jared Goff outside, because he's looked good in those moments uh, ever since he's been in Detroit. Very, very fair point. Which I totally forgot about the uh, that game last year in in San Francisco. Yeah, he, he was he was fine, and then the, the well, bad weather warm though. In like 40s in Green Bay. We're not talking like, hey, it's, in, it's 28 degrees. You're in Philly. Everyone's screaming at you. Uh, I thought the same thing, Jeff, but I, I, I'd still like to see it like in Philly. But 
look, Detroit, uh, you, you got to catch them first. And I know they play yep. the Bills, they play the 49ers, but I don't know that anyone's catching them for that one seed. And you mentioned the 49ers. They're on the road at Green Bay this week. It, it's, you never want to say it's the last stand, but and it's, a, it it's all, it, but it, it is. I mean, you lose uh, this game and you fall to five and six. Uh, it, it's going to be a problem. Kittle hurt. Now, Bosa hurt and probably uh, isn't going to play. Purdy's on the injury report with a shoulder. Uh, Will, you you mentioned it earlier, earlier a few weeks ago. Like, it might just not be their year. Sometimes things happen and you, you get these – Cluster injuries and every and just all the good fortune that you've had in previous years, you, you just kind of do a bad year, and this kind of feels like it's a bad year. Uh, you, you blow another lead at home to a division opponent, so your division tiebreakers uh, aren't great. Uh, you, you're you're going to have to win in Arizona the final week of the season if you're even in in position to to do something there. There's still a, a part of me that that wants to take the Niners here, getting the the the, the two two and a half uh, at Green Bay this week, just because I think Jordan Love can can turn the ball over. Maybe the Niners get Kittle back. Maybe Ward plays because um, because I don't think Green Bay is great either with all those with, with all those close. What do they what do they have now? Four, I think, final possession wins, final final play wins. They've been they've been very fortunate to. Um, to to win some games and of course this is the the super six game of the week presented by DraftKings Sportsbook and of course one of the questions is going to be the what will the outcome of the uh, San Francisco Green Bay game be I would take the two two and a half with uh, with San Francisco John I'm I'm curious to see where where the better is out there uh, come in because I, I think there might finally be that point where. I think people have been like me, kind of believing in Green Bay, thinking it's going to happen. But I think we might be at the point where people might finally be realizing, okay, it's not going to happen. So I might be a dummy for uh, believing in the in the Niners one more week. Well, I don't think you're a dummy. Thanks. I'll start with that. I don't think that at all. I think I think these are the two teams that are that present the biggest threat to this Philadelphia Detroit NFC Championship game that we're talking about. I think they're the two teams that could disrupt that if they can get their acts together, whether or not they will remains to be seen so far. The money's mostly been on green Bay moved us up. We opened this game one and a half. We got to two and a half. We're at two right now. I, I think it's going to be a very evenly bet game. That's why I said earlier that, you know, I think we're going to be looking more at the Colts and then the Rams on Sunday night football. will, and then I know we're going to need the Raiders in the afternoon, which is not going to be very fun. I don't see this game being a big decision for the book. I think there's going to be so much money on both sides of the game. I, I don't really think it's going to be one of the ones we're sweating on Sunday. I mean, John knows I'm a Vikings fan, and he's going to throw out there, oh, the 49ers could break <laughs> it up, the Packers. And we're, I mean, come on, we went into Green I, Bay. I don't know. I don't like what I'm seeing from Darnold. I don't either. That's a, I don't either. No, I'm just kidding. That's, that's, all, that's all it is. Yeah, Sam Minnesota Darnold. Too. Minnesota's the other one. Now it's there. too late. It's too late. You already hurt my feelings. Uh, I do. Okay. Like, joking aside. So I, sensitive, Will. I, I mean, come on. Uh, Green Bay is a little <laughs> bit. Man, they get a lot of benefit of the doubt. I don't know. what They beat Dallas in the playoffs last year. They finished the season strong. But they they certainly just get a lot of benefit of the doubt. I mean, they were laying six last week. Everyone just assumes Love is this great player. I, it's kind of a small sample size, isn't it? Because they've lost a lot of games at home this year. They yeah. lost to Philly. Uh, you know, is it because they played San Francisco close in the playoffs last year? I, I'm not sure. Maybe yes, they blew out Dallas. I, I, yep. Yeah, I, I don't know what it is. Um, it, I think that is what it is. Well, I, I yeah. think I, I think it's because of what they did to Dallas. They should have beat the 49ers in the yep. playoffs. And I, I'm just speaking for me personally. I still remember that two game stretch, right? And think, wow, this team. When and I, I really like Lafleur. And I just think to myself, if this team can get it together, but I agree with you about Jordan Love. I said that in the preseason about Love and CJ Stroud. Let's see them do it both a right. second time before we start including them with Mahomes and Allen and those guys. And neither one of them has done it this season. Nope. And love went out, and it's not like the team fell apart. Malik Willis, who we all yeah, thought was yeah. not even, you know, belonging in the league in the league, and the team didn't really miss a beat. So yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. Um uh, I'm with you, Bear. I just, man, you feel like you're you're trying to catch a falling knife with this 49er team. You still see all the talent, and I think this is only the second time Purdy's ever been a dog. The uh, the NFC title game in Philly a couple of years ago, where look, he got hurt. We we don't know what would have happened if he didn't. Uh, that was the other time. 
Uh, it, I'm going to tease San Francisco. I think that it'll be close. If I had to bet it, I would take the points. I just, I don't know. He's plus 350 to win the West worth a shot. They do have to play at Green Bay this week at Buffalo. They still have to play Detroit. They got a bunch of division games. It just feels like one of these years where it's just not going to go their way. And it may be all the games playing into the deep into January, into February have caught up with them. Uh, it's almost like a baseball team where they hit when they hit, they don't pitch when they pitch, they don't hit. I mean, they're missing kicks. You know, they're giving up, you know, back to back 20 yard scrambles to Geno Smith, where he basically goes, goes untouched, which was just crazy. You know, punting from the plus 40 yard line. Uh, I don't know. It, it just feels like it's not the year for San Francisco. So I've teased, I've teased the 49ers, but not getting involved. Otherwise, the, the last three Packer wins, guys, they beat the Texans on the last second field goal when they were minus three in turnover. So you should game. You shouldn't have won. They beat Jacksonville on a last second field goal. And they just had a field goal blocked. Uh, the Bears were were, were attempting uh, to to win that game. So those are the last three wins. Um, which is you know to your point about what is Green Bay, you know w- w- typically when you win a lot of close games, eventually that goes the other direction, right? You lose a lot of close games. The Niners are interesting, right? Bear mentioned like must win. If you have a must win, you must not be very good. And they have problems, right? Will mentioned it. It's every week it's something new, right? It's Geno Smith untouched, untouched Geno Smith running down the field like when. When they need the pass rush, it's not there. When they need the run game, it's not there. When they need this and that, it's not been there this season. So I'm I'm staying away from this one because I think there's too many variables on each side. I don't feel great about about either one in this game. It'll be a fun game to watch. Um, both teams need to win, but the Niners lose, and let's say and someone has to win Arizona Seattle. So you know they'll they'll be two games back already in the division with just what five weeks left now, six weeks left. So not a spot they want to be in. No, not in. Uh, We'll see ultimately what happens. I guess, yeah, like I said, you've already got a loss against all the division teams and games that you've blown. It's not looking good for, uh, for I, the Niners. I saw a take. I saw a take about a Kyle Shanahan interesting this week that said basically Kyle Shanahan is Andy Reid before Patrick Mahomes. And your rebuttal to that is? I think it's kind of a good point. Like he's missing like the Patrick Mahomes. Sort of does everything right, but still loses games that they might sh- should win, which is what Andy Reid had before before he had Patrick Mahomes. Now all of a sudden he wins all the games, and it's will hit on the punting from the forty two. That left. was Andy Reid before he got Mahomes. But he like, did that like, stuff all the time. You, it's fourth and six. So all Kyle Shanahan needs is a Patrick Mahomes. That's it. it. Well, so, so, something all, close to him. All Robert, to all Robert, Sa- all, all Robert Sala needed was a Patrick Mahomes, and the New York Jets would be a <laughs> would would be a playoff. <laughs> unfortunately, right unfortunately, they, the unfortunately they need more than that. Bear, they need a lot in, in New York. Is, is Aaron Rodgers going to be the GM next year? You think? Just, just change, just <laughs> He's already the GM, GM now, right? <laughs> Will your your Vikings in Chicago three and a half point favorite? Uh, the Bears actually looked mm. competent last week. Uh, I'm worried about my Brian Flores bet, by the way. I think Ben Johnson's going to beat me, and I'm going to be really, really, really upset about that with my uh, assistant coach of the year bet that I have not seen that market pop up once again uh, since I made that bet before the season. But uh, Vikings, Bears, uh, kind of uh, John alluded to Darnold and kind of his struggles lately. Now you go on division division opponent on the road, laying points. Again, you were talking about it before, like this is like, Old school handicapper, like division game, home team, getting points, autoplay, Will. What do, what do you think about your Vikings? I don't want to lay over a field goal with Darnold on the road. He hasn't played well. They haven't played well. They haven't been impressive. Even though they've won three in a row, it, it's just, it, it doesn't feel like they've won three in a row. And it doesn't feel like they're eight and two. They just, man, they were just murdering and they, people. And they could be nine and one. Them. The game against Detroit, they blew. They oh, should have won the game. One, I mean, they would be set up to be the one seed too, which is just, man, up up one with the ball. That That's a tough one if they don't end up with the one seed because I don't know how Darnold on the road in the playoffs is going to be. That one seed is such a huge advantage. Uh, I don't want Caleb Williams though versus Brian Flores. Uh, I, I don't ch- check this market a lot. I don't bet this market a lot, but uh, I, I know most books offered. I think will there be a defensive touchdown? Might be an interesting one. Usually you get around like plus two forty, plus two fifty, mm-hmm. just because Darnold is mistake prone. Caleb Williams against the Brian Flores scheme uh, that that could be something that leads to a pick six. Maybe you take like a flyer on Minnesota to score the first touchdown at like twenty five thirty to one. Uh, as far as the side of three and a half, I'm not interested. Uh, thirty nine is pretty low because both teams can move the ball. I, I I don't have a great feel for this game, but I I do think you know defensive touchdown or Minnesota to score the first touchdown defensively could be worth one if you have a free bet or just you know want a fun one to throw a yeah. piece of bet on john do they still have the market open for next coach to be fired is that still available offshore? <laughs> so, 
Well, I want to vote for Eber Eberflus or whatever his name is because I, I can look, I can tell you guys that we were going to win so much money on the Bears outright on Sunday <laughs> that I actually after I saw the, the Bears make that play down the sideline, I got up out of my desk, out of my office, I walked back into the risk room to be back there with the other guys to see this game end. And I said, why aren't they trying to get any closer? Are they actually okay just kicking from there? And then they, they blocked the field goal. I, I, th- I think that was the most upset I've been about a game this season in the NFL. They don't even want to try to get closer for the kicker. Just you're good right there. Um, very disappointing. Very, very disappointing. We'll need the Bears on Sunday morning. But I don't think it's going to be as big as last week. Green Bay was such a public side last week. They were in every money line parlay. The good news is my hero, Geno Smith, came in in the <laughs> afternoon and wrecked a lot of those parlays. So thank you, Geno Smith. Just but, walked into the uh, end zone to save John uh, Murray. That was awesome. But but uh, but the Bears and the coaching staff there, those guys have got to go. I know it's so it's cliche to like blame everything on Caleb Williams, but I don't think he's exact, exactly getting the best coaching right now in no. Chicago. Yeah, They need to find some serious coaching in there, get him an offensive-minded person to work with. We we need the Bears, but it's going to be a struggle for them down the stretch the rest of the year. I wonder if uh, Caleb Williams' rushing props are worth it. We saw last week that a big part of the game plan was him running the football. You look at the Vikings' defense, their ability to rush the passer. Maybe there's a Caleb Williams couple scrambles here and there, a couple long runs against man coverage. Um, that might be something to explore here for this game. Otherwise, I don't really have much. I I, I – don't trust the Bears to cover, and the Vikings with Darnold, as we mentioned, have looked a lot worse. Sam Darnold appears to be kind of coming back down to earth, which is what we figured would happen at some point this year. I like Will's thought there. What, what, what is the, uh, the the DK slogan? The best place to bet touchdowns? Get one of those touchdown prop. prop I've never played a defensive score like that before. It's not a, to, you to, can get you get a little get a little boost, a twenty five to one, thirty three percent boost, or whatever it is. Yeah. At the end, and it's a it's a good way to attack it. That's why we have you on the show. Will. I appreciate that. And, and John, Finally we don't found a reason, right? I'm looking, it, it, I'm, exactly. I'm looking for the number right now. Exactly. It, it, only, it only took about what, yeah. what 13 weeks to kind of, kind of justify only, carry, right. well, carry your weight. And, and, and John, we don't want you losing your job. We, we, we need you. We need you to stay at the Super Book. I need yes. to come see you in March and, um, and, and we'll break bread. So we, we don't need shop, you. shop around. Shop around. DK might be onto us. It's only seventeen to one for Minnesota to score the first defensive touch. Uh, to, for them to score the first touchdown defensively, thirty-five to one to score the last one. So maybe you split a, a unit or half a unit between those two. But it's a little shorter than I expected. It's kind of like AI. They're kind of listening to us right now and adjusting yes. the lines uh, uh, accordingly. <laughs> the team that the team that we got ahead on, I think, a few weeks back. Uh, whether it was to make the playoffs, it was, whether it was Kyler Murray, comeback player of the year, whether it was uh, to win the division, whether it was Jonathan Gannon, head coach of the year, uh, were the Cardinals. Uh, and the Cardinals right now, as of today, are in first place uh, in the NFC West. And they go to Seattle this week. Uh, Seattle coming off of that road upset, which, which uh, made the the folks in the risk room very happy last week with the Super Book. I don't know. I I have a feeling the Cardinals are are legit. I, I think that offense is going to give Seattle problems. I think defensively, Seattle has Seattle has problems. That was a bit of an anomaly last week uh, with, with them holding San Francisco to what seventeen points? I think it was or twenty points. Was it twenty three twenty? I can't even remember what the final score was. Where in San Francisco was it twenty to seventeen? Twenty three twenty last yeah, weekend. Seattle, San Francisco, whatever it was. But any, anyway. I, I think I think Arizona and, and Murray's ability to move and, and the backs that they have, they play hard and they are well coached. I think for Jonathan Gannon, uh, I actually like the Cardinals here. I hope I'm not falling on a uh, a public side, John. No, I, I think you're probably right about that. And, and, and Jonathan Gannon's a guy that I was definitely wrong about, guys. I, I thought he just seemed like such a doofus when he first got the job. <laughs> yep. No, I mean, he, I think he's done a he's done a tremendous job. And Kyler Murray's playing very well. And Arizona looks very dangerous. And Seattle, there was a time when you know they 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 never lost at home. You can't beat Seattle up there. Twelve. Now they lose at home all the time. So I, I think I do think Arizona will be the side that we see most of the money on. But when you have a game like this, well, right now we're at pick 'em on this game. When you have a pick 'em game, you get money both ways. That's not a game where you're going to have a huge decision. It's not going to really swing your day too much. 
and I, and I, I'm with Bear. I kind of like the Cardinals here too. Seattle off of a tremendous win. The great Geno Smith. What a great, what a great player <laughs> he is. Former Jet, former Geno Jet. Smith. Former Jet, absolutely. Former, former Mountaineer too. Don't forget about that. Yes, that's right. Former Giant. I mean, we could keep going. Um, and by the way, I did find a thirty, a thirty-one to one on Minnesota to score the first touchdown. Seven to one anytime for the defensive touchdown. Okay. Uh, these these are two teams I want to bet on. I think Seattle might be a little reinvigorated after that comeback win, kind of a season saver. Now they're at home, and and like John said, not the not the uh, not the Legion of Boom twelfth man that we're used to. I mean, Daniel Jones went into Seattle and won a game earlier in the season, which tells you all you need to know. Uh, I mean, Seattle at one and a half years, a good teaser. Like Arizona's been my pet, my, my little pet team. I think they've been underrated. I bet Cannon coach of the year. I've been suggesting him coach of the year. It does feel like a tough spot. I, I don't know that I'm going to bet it. I, again, these are two teams I want to play on. I, I'd probably tease Seattle. If I had to guess, I'd actually, I I'd actually kind of go with Seattle. I just feel, uh, I, I feel disloyal jumping off my Cardinals here, but Arizona, uh, Seattle's got weapons with, uh, you know, Metcalf and Walker, uh, Smith and Jigba has really turned into a, you know, a borderline star. Smith can get the ball around. Not a bad defense. I actually like the Seattle team. So I'm not going to bet this game, Jeff. Yeah. Um, the thing about Arizona guys is I still don't know how they're stopping teams on defense. They, like, they, they, they stopped the Jets. They kept the Jets like, out of the end zone. Like I, I don't really, their front <laughs> seven is not like, Good Buda Baker is great, but the rest of the defense is I I don't know how they're doing it. I'll put it like that. Kyler Murray, there are times he's incredible to watch. He he like there are times I'm like, there's no way he completes that pass. Ball falls right in the hands of Marvin Harrison Jr. It's incredible. So um probably stay away from me. I would lean probably Arizona here. Uh I don't like what Seattle I looked the big win last weekend. I get that. Um, save John Murray, but otherwise I don't really like how they played the last month or so. I'd be Arizona or nothing. But again, I I just I seem to pass in Arizona most weeks because I don't really know what they're good at. I, I can't really tell you like, oh, the, the, defensively they're they're good at this or offensively. I mean, Kyler Murray, yeah, they have a, they have a fun run game, things like that. But um, I don't know, man. I, Arizona's a team I just have stayed away from most of the season, except when the Jets were a favorite there two weeks ago, which made no <laughs> sense to anybody. Um, and I'll probably stay away from this one as well. It's a it's a much more uh, pleasant Sunday afternoon uh, this week with uh, the Jets not. Not playing football. To speak Sunday afternoon, John, we return to uh, to prem action. Uh, Liverpool at yeah, St. Well, what what a week! But by the way, coming up, I know Southampton I know. on it's the road, Real Madrid, the the boogeyman, the, the hated Real Madrid Wednesday Champions League, and then Sunday back at Anfield for City. Like like this is I don't get college football, NFL, uh, it, it, those forget it. I'm all in. I would. If I could be anywhere next week, I would be in Liverpool, England. I would just yes, be at agreed. Anfield on Wednesday and Sunday, and then I could just cease to exist. I'd be so happy, Jeff. Uh, I wouldn't need to do anything else. I'd be, oh, sorry. Jeff, does, does, I, I, Jeff I, doesn't get it. I, I, Jeff I doesn't get it. Again, Will, talking, about soccer, be, yeah. talking about soccer again. Sorry. Liverpool, Real Madrid. <laughs> you'd, rather talk about, you'd rather talk about Chiefs, Panthers? Well, come on, Jeff. I'll, I'll be at that game. That'd be, that'd be, that'd be <laughs> fun. That'd be fun. Let me tell it now. <laughs> tell your story now. Okay. So, all right. So, you guys will 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 enjoy this. So, um, my daughter refers to Travis Kelsey as Taylor Swift's boyfriend. Right? Like we're watching games. She goes, Where, "Where's Taylor Swift's boyfriend at?" I'm like, "There, he's 87. There he is." So, um, I was able to secure sideline passes this weekend for me and my son to go on the sidelines and hang out before the game and just sort of take in. And it's my son's second NFL game, but first, like really knowing what football is, first Chiefs game. So. I told uh, them that uh, my kids that uh, we might meet Taylor Swift's boyfriend, and they were in complete awe that I knew who Travis Kelsey was. I don't know why, and that he might come over and say hi to me. Now I played with Travis Kelsey his rookie season. My brother won a Super Bowl there, and this might be the coolest thing I've ever done as a parent. That I wow. may or may not talk to Travis Kelsey before the game. That he might know <laughs> who I am, and that and my daughter's like, "Well, what's he going to call you?" I go, "Schwartzy." I don't know Schwartz, like. <laughs> Like, I, I don't know. He called, I get called Schwartz every team I was on. Um, and so I may or may not try to take a picture just to prove to my kids that I know Travis Kelsey. So big weekend for me, guys, as a parent, that I may know Taylor Swift's boyfriend. So I'm looking forward to, they, to that happening. That is pretty cool. That yeah. is You are the cool dad. Yeah. Yeah. I might, I might, sure. yeah. I might, I might, I don't know. They are honoring the 2010 Panthers in this game Sunday, right? <laughs> Brian Saint Pierre, this actually might be the weekend that Brian St. Pierre played in, in 2010. Uh, the Panthers aren't going to be happy that I'm showing up in Chiefs gear, I don't think. So we'll see how that goes. I'm debating like how Chiefs to, to be. 
Um, because the last time the Chiefs were in town, my brother was it was eight years ago, right? That the the old rotation was every eight years, right? When the AFC NFC uh, yeah. did home and away. So um you were you were game. pretty incognito at the playoff game in Buffalo, though. Maybe you, I was. Yeah, I was incognito. Yeah, but that was a little different. Because a little of, different. But also, too, it was freezing, and I had to wear, like, ski clothes. And though I don't have a Chiefs negative 40-rated jacket. No? No. It's only supposed to be, like, 50 degrees in Charlotte uh, this the, weekend. The, the Chiefs hunting parka. I, I was 100% wasn't... expecting the Chiefs to lose this game until they lost Sunday. Now I think they, they win, and they might even cover. But if they were going to lose this game if they beat Buffalo. All right, well, I looked this game up, by the way. It is 14 years to the day of today. Today is November 21st, wow. 2024. The game was November 21st <laughs> of 2010. And... Um, we were we were playing with Brian St. Pierre, the fourth quarter drive chart. We scored a touchdown to go down 2013. Then the Ravens made a field goal. Then the Ravens went pick six. The very next play, pick six again, and they covered the game 37-13. Um, I don't even know what the number was for the game, but uh, you very famously were on the, the Ravens in this game, right? And uh, you had a little scare there with that, with that 90-yard touchdown we scored in the fourth quarter. Yeah, so I was like 24, 25. I had a lot of money at the time, probably <laughs> money I shouldn't have been betting. Uh, I was living with my there. parents. I think I had just hit a big parlay, so I had like a lot of money in one account. And I had seen Brian St. Pierre play. I, I remember against Miami in college, he played for BC. I was like, there's no way he's covered against the Ravens. I'm going to lay the points on the road. Typical, you know, young, square, whatever. But I guess my handicap was right because he threw pick sixes. I was like, there's no way this guy's not going to turn the ball over. And uh, I needed the first pick six to cover. And I think Ray Lewis picked it off and lateraled it to Ed Reader the other way around uh, and then they got another pick six like cherry on top both with like it, five minutes to go with the uh the old front it, door cover it so, was yeah next time i yeah. complain about a bad beat in the in the group chat remind me of this day <laughs> 2010 i can't believe that 14 years ago My 14 years ago ray, ray lewis picked the ball off and pitched it to dewan landry for touchdown the next okay. play was the ray lewis pick six i've i to, to this day i've yet to see a linebacker in a game i've played run a route for us like Ray Lewis did on that. <laughs> he, he literally at the snap, he just ran over to where we threw the football and the quarterback threw the ball right to Ray Lewis who ran for a 20 yard. Right. Perfect. It was incredible. Beautiful moment. That could, that could be future uh, FAU owl head coach. Ray that? Lewis. Huh? Interesting. The thing about the Dion thing is Dion did coach previously Correct. to being in Colorado. Right. Exactly. Ray Lewis has not coached, at least to my knowledge, anywhere else. That's not really the same no. model. And and I think Eddie George, by the way, is having a good year at Tennessee State, yep. Tennessee Tech, mm -hmm. as Tennessee well. So, like, so some of these guys are doing a good job, but like that doesn't mean that Dion Sanders' model works. Right. He has coached before Colorado. But you're FAU and but, but, yeah. what do you think? Whatever. You get more recruits? I guess you'll get, you'll get buzz. You'll get PR. Your last couple of coaches have been awful. They have not played that panned out well. So bad way to be an owl. It is all of them. Rice, Kennesaw state. That was BS. Temple. Firing Kennesaw state's coach was BS. Yes, it was. Yeah. Ma ma major, major BS. And temple. Uh, I'm so mad at I'm temple getting over two oh. and a half hurt. At least, I, at least I was able to get off. I, I, once they fall behind, I was able to play them on the money line, so I was able to get off by win total bet. John, anything uh, Chiefs-Panthers? Not really. I mean, we'll we'll need Carolina guys, but it's not going to be as big of a need as some of these other dogs because the public doesn't love laying this many points. We're at Kansas City 11 right now. For the most part, you're going to see them thrown into money line parlays, and that'll be about it. I don't, I don't expect it to be a heavy handle game at all. So we'll sit there. Yeah, I mean, is, is this going to be a Chiefs team that's ultra motivated off a loss? Or is it a little bit of a letdown where, hey, we just played the Bills. We know we can kind of stroll in here and win the game by seven or ten. Young can at least kind of do something now where he can at least like give you hope of a backdoor. He's at least looked semi-competent, not like number one pick worthy, but he's looked like he at least has a pulse. Uh, I don't know. You know, the old... Speaking of old school handicapping, the old adage in the NFL has been for a while, at least like, you know, I started betting and learning about betting. When you have a double digit spread in the NFL, you either take the dog and you take the points or you don't bet the game. But that is outdated. That yep. to me is really antiquated. I think five and oh uh, are the favorites this year in double digit spreads. And I think it's going back to like 2011. Double digit favorites are like 60%. I don't know if it's throwing the ball more. So these teams are more pass heavy. So you get more separation when you're a favorite. And there's just a haves versus have nots. I don't know. John could probably speak to it better than me, but I have no interest in this game. It's probably because the lines are not as high as they should be, Will, or as high as they used to be. The, the, the point spreads would have been higher 15 years ago than they right. are now. So whereas you would have been getting, 
I'm, I'm just making up the numbers, but whereas you would have been getting 14 and a half or 16, now you're getting 10 and a half or 11. And I, I don't think it's a good, I don't think it's a good idea to blindly do anything. I, agree. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say just say, Oh, they're a double digit dog. That's a bet. I, I wouldn't do that. But I, I do know that these point spreads have gotten tighter over the years, especially with these home dogs. They, they used to get, they used to get more, more than they're getting now. Well, you should you should do do a better job, John. You should make these lines bigger. Don't be afraid. Uh, I am afraid. I'm afraid. Uh, for, afraid of my own shadow in the NFL this year, Bear. You know that. Yeah, I know. I I, I hate the Panthers. I, I, I more I hate the Saints more than I pant hate the Panthers. But how the hell did the Saints lose that game? Who? I don't the, know. the Saints to the Panthers. Oh, oh yeah, not just awful. Yeah. Awful. But I'm gonna get you excited now, John. After we had to sit through Monday night watching the awful Dallas Cowboys, we actually get a real football game on Monday night. The Harbaugh brothers, Ravens, Chargers. Chargers continue to pull stuff out of there. You know what? I mean, Evan McPherson misses a couple of field goals Sunday night. Uh, Chargers get the win. Bengal are all our Bengals to make the playoffs and whatever else. They're probably uh, done now. All the Burrow, Burrow bets are probably done. Maybe comeback player of the year. Still a chance. But uh, you get the Ravens here off of a loss. Uh, going to SoFi where there really is no great home field advantage for the Chargers. But I, I'm i looking forward to this game. I, I, don't, I don't know what way I'm going to go here if I'm going to have a play in this game right now because maybe – I always won one of those like Chargers alt under uh, under season wins, and it, apparently all it took for the Chargers to turn the corner was an actual competent, legitimate uh, National Football League head coach, and that's now what they have with Jim Harbaugh. I I can't believe how many teams passed on Jim Harbaugh the last few years. Yeah, I mean you look at you look around the league at some of these coaches; these guys are just utterly clueless. And this guy was hanging out in college for the last. I don't know, 10 years, the chargers scoop him up and they paired him with a guy. Who, the, the list of quarterbacks that I would take over Justin Herbert is a very, okay. very short list. There's hardly anybody on that list. I would take Ed Herbert. So now all of a sudden the chargers have a great coach, a great quarterback, the playoff bound. This is going to be an awesome Monday night game, Baltimore off the loss. The public will be on Baltimore, but I, it's not going to be as one-sided as the Sunday night game. Well, it's not going to be like with, the Eagles game is going to be all Eagles. We'll need the Rams big. This is the Monday night game. The Chargers are a hot commodity right now. So there will be a decent amount of support, support for them too. Yeah, and Harbaugh kind of played it perfectly. Hang out in college, get my alma mater on track, win a championship, and then finally leave when you have a quarterback to go to. Because a lot of that yeah. we see in the NBA, we see it you know, with college basketball, uh, NFL. You leave to take an NFL job. And if you're not set up, if you don't have the quarterback, or if you take a bad job in the NBA, you know, go, go coach the Pistons or something. I mean, you're asking <laughs> to fail. You're asking to be fired. You want to take, you know, the Warriors job with Curry and Clay Thompson. You want to take uh, an NFL job where you have Herbert as a quarterback. And that's what he did. And boy, they are set up because not only do they have the coach, they have a quarterback. Offensive line is good. Defense is improved. All you got to do is add some skill guys and skill guys are, are kind of easy to come by if you draft well. Uh, and even McConkey, uh, Quentin Johnson has been revived. I, I think are starting starting to reconsider like the Steelers and even the Chargers. I should say the Chargers and even the Steelers. Like we we both assumed or we all assumed they were playoff teams, but they're kind of they're kind of in the back of the car where the Chiefs, the Ravens, the Bills, they were in the front seat. The other guys in the back seat. I'm starting to like wonder could the Chargers sneak into an AFC title game? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think it's crazy. I would take the three here. Baltimore, a little shaky on defense. They get penalized a lot. And, you know, we don't, we don't usually talk kickers when you're talking about point spreads. Tucker. The downfall of Tucker is one of the more surprising, shocking things. I know he's not young, yeah. but he's also not like 50 years old. Kickers usually age pretty well. Uh, he's just lost his accuracy. He's gone from being automatic to not even average. He's almost like, do you have to cut him? Do you have to come up with a fake injury to get him back on track? You can't count on him. And he was an automatic three points, like once you cross midfield. And now he's just a, a total liability. So that factors into my handicap. I, I like the Chargers plus the points here. It would be Chargers or, or nothing, right? Um, the Ravens' pass defense, guys, is a real problem. I know the Chargers don't have the best passing offense, but it's actually getting better each week. And, you know, they sort of – and I think it's an important note from last weekend, guys, of, of that game on Sunday Night Football, is for so many years, the Chargers had Chargered, right? That's a game they have lost for years and years and years. Now, maybe you argue that a couple of field goals made by the Bengals and they lose that game, we don't talk about how they overcame Chargering. 
But for whatever reason, they won that game. They like they made those plays at the end of the game. Herbert led that drive down the field for the game winning field goal. Like they they oh excuse me, I mean, t- I, ooh that was a I, I had down, I, yeah. I had Dobbins by the way under fifty six and a half <laughs> rushing yards, <laughs> and he and we got it by half. And it, but but if you got that number on game day, I that did. was like fifty three and a half. I got it early in the week. It was fifty six. I got lucky there. Wow. I lost I lost my fantasy I lost my fantasy league by the way on that touchdown. So that was that felt great. Um, so like. The Chargers overcame Chargering last week. That's a big thing for their franchise. For so many years, they had lost that type of game. And the confidence they're going to have now playing the Ravens, who, again, their pass defense is a concern. The offensive line is a little bit of a concern. So I like the Chargers here plus the three points. It's always an adventure with them, but I'll take the three. Yeah, it, it sounds like that That would probably be the um, the way to go. So anybody else got anything else? Yes, no, maybe so. Uh, ugly week. Be careful. You don't have to bet every game. Some of these teams, man, he's just, oh, you don't really want to lay points with some of these teams on the road, like the Bucks and the Broncos. It's just, there's some ugly can, home dogs. So. I, I was going to say, can, can you pass on the contest this week? Can you just take a skip? Yeah. Can you just yeah, skip? I wish. Hey, skip? Can you have one skip week, John? Is that is that a thing we can do? Can we can make that I, happen? I think that's bad advice from Will. <laughs> uh, my advice would be bet every game, parlay them all together. Parlay, <laughs> tease. Tease them all yep. together. Yeah, I mean, how hard could that be? Just pick them up. Throwing some NBA teasers, right? Tease. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 Cavaliers. Cavaliers. <laughs> Cavaliers are a bounce back. Yeah. Sixes, yeah. sixes oh, are due yeah. to get the sixes are due to get hot. Well, that's oh, yeah, the sixers that's a bad due. article, sixers too. Are, they're about as due as the Washington Generals, guys. <laughs> what a, what two, a, the two and 12 Sixers. Two and 12. And Bede was what not happy about the sack. article. And B was not happy that article came out. Uh, he's having a, a I am. problem with the media. He's been going, he's been going after Too bad. And now Paul George is hurt, too. Sixers to miss. We're alive and well. John, you have a fun Sunday rooting for the uh, the Giants, Titans, and Raiders. All right there, my friend? I'm rooting for Liverpool Football Club. I don't know about any of those other teams. Uh, I'll be rooting for Liverpool Sunday morning. I tell you that much right now. I'm stoked. Thanks, guys. Oh, guys never, thank you. You'll never walk alone. All right, Barrett, back from the Gamma Goop Chat. Uh, I get to be cool down this weekend, so I'm looking you forward to it. You get to be cooler than you normally I'm, already I'm, are. I'm looking, I'm looking for that. You're already a um, cool dad. I, I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. You are. So we'll we'll see how Sunday goes. Hopefully the Chiefs win, though, so that'd be more fun. Um, all right, I'm going to fade the Cowboys' rush defense, Bear. Gee, I can't imagine why. Yeah, I know, right? Shocking. Uh, second worst in the NFL behind the Carolina Panthers. They allow 151 yards per game rushing. Uh, Mixon last week had 109 against them. Barkley at 66 the week before, only 14 carries. Uh, Bijan, 86. Guarnero, is that how he's pronounced his last Guinero. name? Guarnero, 85. Yep. Remember, Mason got hurt in that game, so he didn't even start that game. And then against the Lions, Montgomery had 80. Gibbs had 83. They only had 12 carries each. So I'm going to take Brian Robinson. How about them Cowboys? Take the Brian Robinson, the commander's running back, over 69 and a half rushing yards. My concern, though, and I will be fair, is that if they get up to a big lead, do they give him 17 carries? Um, because we know they have Eckler and other guys mm-hmm. on the roster. That's my only concern about this wager. But I keep riding. I do this every week. And I lost the Barkley one because he only had 12 carries. Like yeah. and they were up so big so fast. In that game, their third street running back had nine carries. I mean, that's how bad the game was. So I'm hoping this sort of stays close for a little bit to to uh to uh to get the Brian Robinson over six nine and a half yards rushing. Uh, but that's the number today, and that's what I'm taking, Bear. Yeah. Cowboys right now. I was kicking around earlier in the week too about the the record, the the worst record in the league market. Uh, the Cowboys is plus twelve hundred. I think I saw this. Yeah, and, and, and you look, and, and they the thing is, they they play a lot of those other bad teams, so their wins on that schedule pretty bad though. Like I, I think it ultimately comes down to the Browns and the Giants. If you if you oh, if you, well, you like the Browns wager, oh. if you like the Browns to be to to be the worst team in the league, they may not win a game. They got the Steelers twice. Obviously, if they win tonight, then then that changes things. But if they lose tonight, I think that number also. Plummets quite a bit. I, I, Browns, Giants would be the two teams I would look at there. So, what's your best bet, Bear? My best bet presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. I'm a little worried about uh, this now with the conversation with John Murray about the book and uh, gonna need the Rams. But it, I'm staying away from the to- the point, the, okay. the actual number in this game. But I'm gonna take the Rams under 23 and a half, uh, just because I think the way the Eagles' defense has come together, we talked about it. Uh, when we were kind of debating whether the it was the NFC was the Lions and everyone else, yeah. Uh, you, you look at the, the the front getting pressure on quarterbacks now. The the young cornerbacks are playing better. Yeah. Um, their ability to run the ball now and, and keep other teams off the field. Rams every now every now and then have just one of those 
one of those kind of mind scratching offensive performances where they just kind of struggle to score points. I mean, you, you look at that game, the uh, the Bucks game where Philly got blown out. Everything kind of changed since then. Yeah, the- allowed there's allowed 16, 3, 17, 23, 6, and 18 in the last six games. So their defense is playing really well. Uh, we'll see if those corners can defend uh, yeah. Cup and Nakua and Stafford in that offense. Uh, so give me the Rams team total under 23 and a half. And uh, if they win 23 20, good for John Murray in the, uh, in the Super Bowl. <laughs> I, I, I don't want my friend losing his job. No, uh, you, you certainly don't want I, that. I was, was kind of, um, uh, the funny thing is, I can just imagine him telling that story about going back in the, in the risk room and like ready to celebrate and then just to, to, so mad at champagne and ice. Yeah, exactly. This will be an Eagles home game too. Oh yeah. Eagles. Oh yeah. Yeah. But a lot of Eagles fans there. Um, all right. My best bet presented by DraftKings Sportsbook is Tampa Bay minus the six year bear on the road in New York. So we talked about this slate this week, right? Mm-hmm. You're going to have to pick one road favorite to cover a game this week. Just like you can't pick five underdogs. I don't think, right. I mean, you certainly can, you certainly can do that. I'm picking Tampa Bay here to cover against the Giants for a couple of reasons. One, Tampa Bay played four tough games in a row without a lot of their offensive weapons. And then they were close. They lost Ravens by 10. You know, they're up in that game, like 17, nothing close loss to the Falcons, close loss to the chiefs, close loss to the Niners. And they, they battled the heck against the Niners and chiefs too. Like, they did like, play much better than we thought without Mike Evans with, with without Godwin. That's a, those are four playoff teams in a row. They lost all four. So ignore the record for a second. They, they're off a of bye now. They rested for a week. Mike Evans back in the lineup this week, Bear. So I think this hey. offense is going to feel much better against a Giants team that is not good. This is the worst team they've played maybe all season. And they're off a of bye. They're feeling good. We're also going to fade a little bit of the Tommy DeVito experience, Bear, because Tommy DeVito is not good. No. He was not good last season. No. His, the story is... was fun, and the Giants' defense played well. Right. But the Giants are not a good team. And Tommy DeVito doesn't make them any better. It's just not Daniel Jones. This is tanking with the quarterback yes. that the fans yes. like as opposed Correct. to tanking with the quarterback Which, yes. that the fans hate. Correct. And the Giants have run the ball well recently. Well, what does Tampa Bay do well on defense? They stop the run. So this is the road favor I'm taking this week. It's the road. I'm not taking the Lions. I'm not taking the Vikings. This is the one I'm taking this week. Give me the Bucks minus a six at New York. Also worth noting, the Giants don't cover a lot of home games. Um, well, they haven't, they haven't scored like. What's what's the like Daniel Jones hasn't thrown a touchdown pass at home in like forever. Yeah, I did. And it's thought obviously yeah. he's not going to. So I, it's a risky to do this on the road. I get it, um, but I like the Bucks off a of buy. Uh, the Bucks off a of buy with Mike Evans back. I think they're going to feel pretty good about what they can be. I'll be rooting for him. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll be rooting for. We have, I, I have Giants unders and all over the. Yeah, place. exactly. We got we got the we, we got the uh, the hard knocks unders. All those. All uh, of them. Just from the beginning. Oh, you see the AFC North is hard knocks in season hard knocks AFC North. The entire North? I think so, yeah. I, I, I missed that. Yeah, I think so, Ooh. yeah. I have to, have to check that out. But yeah, it, man, Giants, Giants, not a good team uh, at all. Hopefully they will uh, they will lose. And we got them 10 to 1, worst record in the league before the, uh, the year started. So we are live now, I think. Um, it was fun. I hope you have a great weekend with the. Uh, Travis with with uh, Taylor Swift's just, boyfriend. Just, I, good. I, I hope I hope to say hi. <laughs> you'll say hi. You'll you'll I'll find a way. No, I'll be fine. You'll, you know who's this is your credential right here. You can you just go my, my you face. can go wherever you want on the field for sure. Uh, once I get on the field, yes. Yeah. Yeah. You'll be all right. Appreciate everybody out there for download on Apple, Spotify, wherever you eat your pods. Uh, checking us out on a YouTube channel as well. John, Will, appreciate you as always. You know the schedule by now. College on Wednesday, NFL Thursday, Bruce the Bear on Friday, columns throughout the week on FoxSports.com. And remember, the less you bet, the more you lose when you win.